So the VP, the CFO, the CJ, and the CEO, these are obviously the four bosses of Toontown. And right now I want to share with you guys in order from least favorite to favorite my thoughts on all of the bosses in Toontown. Now, let's start out with my Okay, this is just a disclaimer. I I like all of these bosses to a, a degree. I enjoy doing them, but some of them I enjoy more than others and less than others. So, just keep that in mind. I don't I don't actually dislike any of these bosses. But So getting into it, probably my least favorite and this is going to surprise some of you that know me from the old days, but probably one of my, probably my least favorite boss in the game is probably the CEO. Now, back in the day, I really enjoyed the CEO. It was probably my favorite boss, but now it's my least favorite boss, and here's why. There's the V2.0s. You know, they were put in the game to, I guess, make things harder, provide more of a challenge, but honestly, it that it doesn't really do it doesn't really do that job. It kind of just makes it it just makes it more tedious to do the CEO to do the battle rounds because I mean it's it doesn't make the cog stronger or anything it's just you destroyed the cog and there was another cog inside of it but it's not any stronger it's just the same cog but it's a skelecog now and you have to spend more time destroying that skelecog so that doesn't really provide a challenge that just makes it more tedious to battle the cogs so lost my train of thought anyway probably my probably my biggest gripe with the whole boss is the feeding round i i don't know who finds the feeding round fun but if you find the feeding round fun then let me know in the comments so i can know that at least one person enjoys it because i don't enjoy it at all my friends don't enjoy it at all it's it's so painfully boring just walking around feeding cogs and it's also really frustrating because some newer tunes will tend to feed some random cog in some far off table that they're not supposed to be feeding you know you're supposed to feed the closest tables and not start a new table until you have all the cogs you know destroyed at a specific table or at least close to being destroyed so you know if you have most of the tunes feeding one of the tables next to the conveyor belt, and then you have a random tune flunky level one going to a table close to the CEO and feeding the cogs. That's going to make things complicated because then you're going to have people trying to keep up with the table next to the conveyor belt and the table next to the CEO, and before you know it, you have 20 cogs getting angry and it just becomes a big giant mess. So the feeding round while being boring is also quite catastrophic if you're not with that many experienced tunes. Now on the flip side, it's fortunate that the less experience the overall suit level is, the less cogs you get. So you know, that'll balance it out. Now the last round, well, I don't I don't hate it, you know. I, I enjoy it to some degree, but it it takes way too long. It takes probably... Hmm, I was going to say it takes the longest of any boss. Actually, yeah, it does. If you if everyone is competent and everyone knows how to play and is good at the final round, the final round is still going to take a while. It You can't... It's not like the VP or the CFO where you can just have eight really good tunes. It's going to be over and the span of two to three minutes it's not like that it's gonna take a while and then there's the cj if everyone's good and there's bonus weight then you can also do that in within minutes but you know cj with no bonus weight i'll i will be getting to that a little later but the ceo final round takes way too long and it's basically the ceo is just another easy boss trying to mask itself as a hard boss because it's got the v2.0s which i already explained that it's got a lot of cogs it's got 
Um, it's got a lot of cogs in the second battle round especially, and if it's a 4 or 5 fire CEO or a 2 fire CEO, they're all level 12 cheeses, which, again, if you're with a bunch of low level tunes that aren't competent, then, you know, that can be a problem. But, you know, if you are with semi-competent tunes and someone has a restock, then you should be fine. Like, that's not tough at all. And plus, boss bots, they don't have any group attacks. You know, honestly, CEO would be a lot more challenging if boss bots had group attacks, but none of them do, except Yes Men. They have synergy, but they're the only ones, and they're not even in the CEO because the lowest cog in the CEO is Downsizer, so the lowest cog you can possibly fight in the CEO is a level 9. So, Yes Men having a group attack is irrelevant. So, you know, if you had some of the higher boss bots, if they had group attacks, like Power Trip or Paradigm Shift, then the boss would be a lot more challenging. It would be a lot more challenging. The V2.0 thing would actually play a factor, because, you know, you can't just sound your way through the CEO unless you have tons of restocks, but if you don't restock in the first battle round, you're going to run out of sound before you're even close to finishing the cogs. So. Boss bots having group attacks, you know, that would that would make it challenging. But for whatever reason, none of the none of the strong boss bots have any group attacks, and it just baffles me as to why. So there's the V2.0 aspect, and then there's the CEO himself. He does a lot of damage, yes, and you mostly see lower tunes and, or tunes that didn't have a previous tune and it, they're on their first tunes you know they tunes like them they'll struggle with the ceo at first you know they'll think it's a hard boss but the thing about him is his attack pattern gets so obvious and when you figure out how to dodge the attacks there's no reason for you to get hit anymore there's a very specific way to dodging his attacks you know if you if you're off your table and he golfs at you or does four, all you have to do is, you know, run to a corner of your table, get on, and you're good. And then if he does four, throws gears at you, or golfs at you, all you gotta do is jump off and you're good. The, I think the only hard part about this, about this round is it, it can be kind of hard to react to the gears because he does do that quite fast, but, you know, other than that, he's really predictable and he's really easy to, you know, avoid once you know how to avoid him. And he does a lot of damage, but, you know, like I said, once you learn how to dodge, it, it that really isn't a factor. You know, he, him doing a lot of damage is another way that the boss, the whole boss is just masked as something that's challenging when it's not and then there's the whole there's the whole reorganizing and downsizing thing but again if you're with tunes that are competent that'll be irrelevant because you'll probably end up defeating the boss before he has a chance to do any of that i can't remember the last time i was in a ceo where that happened i think I don't think I've been in a in a run like that since Toontown Online, so it's definitely been a long time. You know, you back in the old days, it was pretty common for a team of eight tunes for all of them to die in the CEO because they didn't know what they were doing. But now that people have learned this easy boss's attacks, then you know, there's nothing to it. You shouldn't die in the CEO. Simple as that. So. Getting to my next favorite boss is the CJ. I still don't like this boss. And I dislike Lawbot in general more than I dislike Bossbot. But that's another video for another day. We're just talking about the bosses themselves right now. So, as it stands, the CEO... I mean, the CEO is my least favorite, while the CJ is my third favorite. Now, this boss... There are a lot of variables that go into how fun or how boring this boss can be, such as bonus weight. If you have a lot of bonus weight, then the CJ instantly becomes a lot more fun because, you know, it goes quickly and you're not 
in the final round forever. But if you don't have any bonus weight, you will be stuck in that final round for eons. It's so crazy, and it's so tedious just throwing stuff in the pan, going to get more, and rinse and repeat for, like, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how how good the tunes are at stunning, and, you know, how often tunes stop fighting to tune each other up. You know, there are a lot of factors that go into how long a non-bonus weight CJ can take. Also, in my opinion, I think the CJ now has, like, the worst reward in the game. Because cog summons are kind of useless. Building summons, you know, they, they can be... If you're desperate for a building, you can summon one. But honestly, you don't really need a building summon because you'll... There will be a district with... A building that you'll need. There, there are bound to be one. And then the cog invasions, you know, it can definitely be useful for tasks, but I feel like it's lost its... I feel like it's lost its, you know, the use it had in the old game, because you don't need invasions to get double points and cog factories and whatnot. So, it they've definitely lost some of their value. Obviously, they still have value in terms of gag training, but, you know, despite that, I still think they are the worst reward in the game. But, you know, I'm not saying that they're bad, but compared to all the other rewards, I definitely would prefer the other rewards over what the CJ has to offer. Plus, you it, it takes so many CJs to finally get invasions because you can't get any invasions from your early levels because basically how it works is first you get the cog summon, then you get the building summon, then you get the invasion summon on a specific cog. So it takes a while to actually get invasions and you never know what you're going to get from a CJ. So yes, I do think that the CJ has the worst reward in the game next to the usefulness that the rewards of other bosses provide. And I forgot to go over this, but obviously the CEO gets fires, and I like fires because they can't miss, and they take out V2.0s, and they're the only things, they're the only things besides on an organic train track that can just one shot a level 12. So you know, if you're feeling lazy or something, then you can just fire a level 12 or a V2.0 and just be done with it. So yes, I like fires. I like them very much. So moving on, my second favorite boss would be the VP. I have always liked the VP since I played Toontown Online. It has always been an enjoyable fight for me. It's it's a quick and fun battle, you know? It doesn't take long at all. The whole thing probably takes from anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It can take longer if the tunes are just that bad, but honestly, even if you're with tunes that don't quite know what they're doing, you can still get out of there in 20 minutes. It's definitely a fun battle. Now, the cogs could be stand to be a little bit tougher because, I don't know, the, the first battle round is really strange because, well, first of all, you know, you'll have the first few cogs that come out, it'll typically be a level 12 Mr. Hollywood along with maybe a level 1 cold caller and uh, one to two other small cogs so the first battle round is really weird and after you destroy the first few cogs you know one second you'll have a bunch of cold callers and telemarketers come out you'll destroy them and then all of a sudden it's Hollywoods and Minglers so it's pretty inconsistent as far as cogs go. The Skeletal Ground is different you know the lowest cog level you can find there is level 8 so that not so much. Skeletal Ground is fine. But, you know, I think maybe you could have a little more cogs in the Skeletal Ground, because it's... The cog rounds are quite... I think they're a little too short. You know, I feel like it would be a bit more of a challenge if there were more cogs, and I say that because, you know, Cellbots actually have group attacks. They have, A lot of the cogs have group attacks. Like, you have Mover and Shakers, and they can mess you up real quick, especially if they're level 9s, and then you have the level 11 Minglers with their Paradigm Shift. And they also have Power Trip. It's not as strong as Hollywoods, but it still does a lot of damage. And then, of course, you have Hollywoods who have Power Trip. And, you know, 
they use their power trip way more than Mingler's use their group attacks because I think Mingler has about five or six different attacks and they have a lot of attacks that only target one tune. But the Hollywoods, they have only two attacks. They have power trip and razzle dazzle. So they have a higher chance of hitting you with a group attack than a Mingler does. So, you know, Hollywoods are super dangerous. If you have your gags miss and you have a row of Hollywoods, oh, man, everyone's going to get messed up. So, you know, I feel like the Skeletal Ground, it could stand to have a, a few more cogs in it. And SOS cards. I I love SOS cards. I I don't love the, the new big buffs that... Uh, old men and the cogs miss and the tunes hit got but you know in general i do like sos cards i think they're great rewards they're really useful in a pinch like in solos or even in group settings they can they can definitely get you get you out of something real quick though i do prefer the way the sos cards used to be because they were semi-balanced except bessie bessie's never been balanced and sos shopping SOS shopping is fun. I love SOS shopping. That's probably one of my favorite things to do in the game because usually when you're SOS shopping, it's when it's with good tunes that have maxed their cellbot suits. So you get a good card, the runs are fast, and they're really fun. And you just keep going and going, and everyone's just having a good time. So VP definitely has been an enjoyable boss for me the entire time that I've played Toontown. And my favorite boss at the moment is probably the CFO. Now, the CFO, it's cog ground. It's pretty long, but I feel like it's not too long. It's not too long or short. And I feel like it can be a bit challenging because you have the robber barons that have their power trip that does uh, 21 damage as opposed to a Mr. Hollywood's 20 damage. And like a Mr. Hollywood, they only have two attacks, the Power Trip and the T-Off, so there's a really big chance of them using Power Trip over T-Off. But other than that, I don't think they have... Yeah, other than that, they don't have a lot of... They don't have their strong cogs to do group attacks. Because Number Crunchers, Bean Counters to Lone Sharks, they don't have any group attacks. But Lone Sharks do have Chomp, though, which does 24 damage, and they do use it quite a lot. So that can be that can be quite hectic when your gags miss and you have Robber Barons using Power Trips and Lone Sharks using Chomps. But another thing about the CFO that I find weird is how, like, the VP, the Cog Round, it's, the Cog Round is quite strange because, for one, it mixes Skelecogs in with actual Cogs, which that doesn't really matter because they're the Skelecogs aren't are only you know different on the outside from Cogs. They're not any different as far as how you fight them, but it's it's definitely weird to see you know Cogs and Skelecogs standing side by side. And then what really matters is how they mix the levels. Like like the VP, it you know, you could have a robber baron, a level 12 robber baron walk out with a level 1 short change, and it's just kind of weird. I kind of don't like when they mix levels, because, you know, you have two level 11s, and then, like, two level 4s, and obviously you don't want to use two fogs, so you do something like two trunks and two pianos, and I, I, don't, know, I don't get the point of having such weak cogs in the CFO. I mean, in the VP, I can kind of understand because you can be really low laugh. You can be, you can basically be 15 laugh and still be in the VP. But the CFO, you know, you have to be decently high to be in the CFO. So I don't get the point of having level level one to six cogs in the VP. I think anything below, I think anything below level seven shouldn't really be in the CFO. You know, but that's just my take. And the final round, you know, the crane round, I think that's, it's really interesting. I think as far as concepts go, that definitely takes the cake. You know, having your magnets and throwing stuff at the CFO, it's it's quite fun. Craning's really fun. Gooning, not so much, but, you know, if you're multitasking, if you're watching something on TV or watching sports or something, you know, gooning is something that's really easy and doesn't take a lot of, a lot of focus. But I think craning is definitely the most fun aspect as far as final rounds go, it's definitely what I enjoy the most 
in the game as far as that is concerned. And re the reward is great too. I like I like unites. You know. I think if you could unite shop that would be broken. That would be insane. But as it stands, there's no way to tell what unite you're gonna get, so Unite shopping is not a thing, but CFO marathons are a thing, and they are very popular. I think, I think the two most two of the most popular things in the game, as far as bosses go, are probably CFO marathons and SOS shopping, and those are both things I like to do. I don't like CJ marathons because I just don't like the CJ and CEO marathons. Um, I I've done one CEO marathon, and it was. Back in the old game, I, I did three. It was just only three, and I, I was just done. I was just thinking, oh my goodness, how does anyone do more than two at a time? Like the third one, I was regretting in the middle of it. I was just thinking, man, I really want to leave, but, you know, I'm not that type of guy. I'm not just going to leave leave my homies in the middle of a fight that I already committed to. So that was my beat for going on that third one when I really wasn't feeling it. But you know, I stuck it out. I I stayed for the homies and didn't abandon them. So and plus the CFO is also one that like the VP and like the CJ with bonus weight. The CFO is one that if you have good tunes that know what they're doing, it's a really quick and easy run, you know, it's it's quick, it's fun, it doesn't take long to do. You can just breeze through the battle round with using really good strategy and coordinating sound with drop or sound with throw and whatnot. And then you get to the crane round, and if you're all good at craning, then that can be legitimately be done in two or three minutes, you know. I've been in a lot of fast runs, you know. Myself, I'm I'm pretty decent at the crane. I'm not I'm no legendary ninja dog, but I'm definitely pretty decent. And, you know, putting me with three other tunes that are you know, as good or better than me at cranes, then, you know, we can be done in less than five minutes. So, CFO, definitely, definitely my favorite boss in the game right now, which, I think in the old days, I think in Toontown Online, I think my favorite bosses were first CEO, then VP, then CFO, then CJ, so my order has definitely changed quite a bit as I've gotten older. But yeah, guys, that... That's my perspective on all the bosses right now. You know, that's my least favorite from to favorite. And wow, this video is long. You know, whenever I plan on a video, lately, whenever I've planned on a video being about 10 minutes, and it, I end up, you know, talking for longer than I expected, and it ends up being 22 minutes like it is now. So that's my perspective on the bosses. Least favorite is CEO, and then CJ, then VP, then CFO. That's it for me this time. I will see you guys in the next one.